At the end of this lesson, you will be able to see how different ratios are equivalent or not, which means you'll be learning how to calculate equivalent ratios, and that generally means multiplying and dividing them. But first, let me tell you about tuna casserole. Tuna casserole is a dish that a lot of people like, but honestly, I just can't stand it. <laughs> I loathe the taste of tuna, but I kind of like the rest of the stuff that's in it. I mean, we're talking about pasta, cream of chicken soup, cheddar cheese, mayonnaise. Okay, so maybe I'm the only person in the world who likes the mayonnaise in it. But the taste of tuna is kind of gross to me, and the mayonnaise like kind of counteracts the tuna. Then again, the recipe we're going to be looking at today calls for tuna and french fried onions. So maybe there's enough of the onions I can counteract the tuna. I don't know. But we're talking about tuna casserole today. So here's our basic recipe. Three cups cooked pasta. So if you're following this recipe, that means you're going to have to go boil the pasta first. It takes seven minutes to boil pasta. And then you need six ounces of tuna, and you got to drain the water out of the stuff. Usually tuna comes in a can, but if you're buying fresh tuna, you probably don't got to drain nothing. Then you need one can of cream of chicken soup. But if you ever go to the grocery store, you know that cream of chicken soup comes in like these giant cans and then small cans. We need one 10-ounce cans. Remember that because the one can part gets weird. When we make an equivalent fraction for it, you can't like cut a can in half. You can't go to the store and be like, yeah, I only need half a can. They're just going to look at you like you're crazy and buy, say, buy the whole can, lady, right? If I'm trying to make my recipe smaller, I can't go smaller than one can. I need one cup of shredded cheddar cheese because cheddar is better. And you need one and a half cup of French fried onions. The French fried onions go on top after you've mixed and cooked everything so it's nice and crunchy. Today, we're not actually going to do the cooking. We're just going to talk about keeping these ratios the same and then cooking for a smaller group or a larger group. But you know if I'm cooking it for me, I'm just going to leave out the tuna, right? Okay, so you have a chart that looks like this. And what we're going to do is we're going to double the recipe, and then in the second column, we're going to triple the recipe, and in the last column, we're going to cut the original recipe in half. But pay attention to that can of chicken soup, because you can't cut a can in half. So the recipe calls for three cups of pasta. But now I'm going to double that. So three times two is six. And now I'm just going to move to the next column and triple that part. So if I needed three cups of pasta and I triple that, Three times three is nine. And if I want half of the original amount, then I need to take three and divide it by two. So three divided by two is one and a half cups. So now let's move on to the ounces of tuna. The original recipe calls for six ounces of tuna. Six times two is 12. So I get 12 ounces. Now I want to triple that. So six times three is 18 ounces. If I want to cut that original amount in half, now I need to say six ounces divided by two, which is three ounces. Now you see the next part's going to get kind of tricky. So you're going to have to do a lot of this on your own. Don't worry, I'll help you with it. If I wanted to double the recipe from one can, I just make it two cans. So that's pretty easy. If I wanted to double it from one cup, I just make it two cups. That's pretty easy. But if I want to double it from one and a half cups, now we're getting kind of tricky. If I need to cut those in half, that's what we're going to go over next. The recipe calls for one and a half cups of onions. I just add one and a half two times. And I get three. Because one plus one is two. And a half plus a half makes another one. So that's three. Are you with me? If I want to triple one and a half, then I add one and a half plus one and a half plus one and a half. So I can add one plus one plus one, which is three, but now I have to do what those halves. A half plus a half is a whole, which now gives me four, and then I have that half left over. So I end up with four and a half. So one and a half times three is four and a half. Write that down. The next part is asking me to take one and a half and cut it in half. So I take one and a half, and I'm going to do it in parts. So what's half of one? And what's half of a half? So half of one is a half. And half of a half is a quarter. So what do you get when you add a half plus a quarter? 
What's one half plus one fourth? Like, for me, it's easier if I just make them all fourths, okay? Can I make them all fourths? One half is actually the same as two fourths. So if I say one fourth plus two fourths, then I can get three fourths. Did I just break your brain? Sorry if I did. The whole point here is one half of one and a half is three fourths. So I need you to finish this whole worksheet on your own now. But let's take a second to look at those equivalent fractions because that's what I did there. I turned a half into two fourths and I made an equivalent fraction. And that's kind of, I've been making these equivalent ratios all along, but now we gotta talk about equivalent fractions. Now one half is relatively easy to work with. One half is exactly the same as two fourths. And two fourths is exactly the same as four eighths when we're talking about equivalent fractions. Equivalent ratios, this, in this case it would mean the ratio is the same, but the amount is different. But you're starting to see a pattern here, don't you? Two, four, eight, two, four, eight, you see that? But that's a little bit easier than what I'm about to do with two thirds. If I give you two thirds and I asked you to find an equivalent fraction, you could just multiply the top and the bottom by the same number. If you multiplied by two for the numerator, then you gotta multiply by two for the denominator. So what is two times two and three times two? So two thirds is the same amount as four sixths. Those are equivalent fractions and equivalent ratios. But two thirds is also the same as something else. I could take two and multiply it by 10, but if I do it to the numerator, I gotta do it to the denominator. So what is two times 10 and three times 10? 20 thirtieths is an equivalent fraction to two thirds. And I could just do this over and over again, right? There's no limit. Two times what? I don't know, maybe five. And if I do two times five, that means I gotta do that to the denominator. Two times five. And that will give me another equivalent fraction. So two times five and three times five gives me 10 fifteenths. Two thirds and 10 fifteenths are equal. It's kind of weird when you think that all of these numbers here are equal to each other. It's because of that fraction bar there. The trick to remember is that they're equal ratios and equal fractions. They represent the same ratio, even if they're a different amount. Let me show you a picture and see if this helps. Pay attention to the yellow part. This yellow part is two thirds because the whole circle is cut into three pieces and I got two of them. But on this circle, the yellow part's the same amount, but I have more cuts. I just cut it into smaller pieces, which means there's a lot more of them. If you look closely at the yellow part, it's the same size in every single picture. So don't let the numbers confuse you. Like I always say, when in doubt, draw it out. Or cook it out, I guess. I don't know, this is all about cooking, right? If your ratios are wrong when you're cooking, you're gonna have too much tuna taste, or maybe it'll be too salty. I'm never gonna disagree with you if you add too much cream of chicken soup because I kinda like it when it's extra creamy. So the trick to double or triple or quadruple or whatever your recipe is just multiply. Oh, actually, you know what? Let me say it a little more fancy Nancy way with the language of the discipline. I should say it like this. If you want an equivalent fraction, you have to multiply the numerator and the denominator by the same amount in order to keep the ratio the same. I like using fancy words, so you can call me Fancy Nancy. You can just call me Nancy if you want. Just don't make me eat that tuna. Just leave it out, all right? Deal? <laughs> all right, that is your lesson for ratios and making equivalent ratios, which are kind of like equivalent fractions, right? SpongeBob, he's the best cook of all. Plus, he can do ratios. Just watch him, he reads about it. Do your homework now.